Hello, everyone. This is Jeanette Chaliga with VGA. Thank you so much for being here to celebrate VGA's fifth birthday. And coming up right now, we have Brenna O'Sullivan, and she's going to be sharing a historic view of your historic house, the WPA House Survey. Brenna, thank you so much. Take it away. Thanks for having me. So before we get started, why are we talking about the WPA? Well, this will be of most help to those of you researching American ancestors, specifically American ancestors that owned property. And we'll talk about why in a minute. But first off, what is the WPA? The WPA is an acronym for essentially what was two different organizations, the Works Progress Administration and the Works Project Administration. They were successor organizations. The WPA as the Works Progress Administration came first, followed by the Works Progress Administration in 1939. The two together ran from 1935 to 1943, but there was an earlier program called the Civil Works Administration from 1933 to 1934 that's often treated as part of the WPA. Now, what did the WPA do? The WPA was a federal employment program during the Great Depression, and it did a lot of things, including of interest to genealogists, historic record surveys, infrastructure, public art, and architectural surveys. So today we're specifically focusing on architectural surveys, which can be used for things like house histories, and also for tracing our ancestors' records when we want to learn what property they owned. Now, we are looking specifically at an architectural survey called the Historic American Building Survey. But it's important to note that there are two other related projects. And you will run into these because, long story short, all three projects end up producing some sort of material you can use in house histories. The first of these related projects is called the Federal Art Project. It ran from 1935 to 1943, and it employed artists in creating public art. In some states, this public art included the documentation of historic architecture. For Virginia, if you have ancestors from Virginia or you own a historic home in Virginia, be sure to check out the Library of Virginia's WPA Historic Houses Drawing Collection for images that were created as part of the Federal Art Project. And then we have the Federal Writers Project. The Federal Writers Project ran during the same period, 1935 to 1943, and it employed writers, historians, and more. This project was best known for its WPA guidebooks which in at least a few states included a study of historic architecture. Connecticut has a survey called the WPA House Survey, which is actually a result of the Federal Writers Project instead of the Historic American Building Survey. So we have a little bit of confusion of terms and I wanna make sure we're clear before we go forward. The WPA Architectural Survey is technically the same thing as the Historic American Building Survey. You'll hear me using both terms. But there are two different periods of coverage for the Historic American Building Survey. The Historic American Building Survey was actually started in 1933, and it runs, depending on which source you look at, from 1933 until either 1941 or 1943. And then it pauses and restarts about 1956, 1957. The structure under which it was managed is different after 1956. The Historic American Building Survey is now run and managed entirely on the federal level. Under the WPA, there were local offices. That means that there is WPA era material that never made it to Washington. So just a quick timeline of the architectural survey. The proposal to create an architectural survey was submitted 
on November 13, 1933. It was established by the National Park Service on December 12th in coordination with the American Institute of Architects, and it was funded by the Civil Works Administration. By April 1934, there was an agreement to store the results of the formal survey at the Library of Congress. By May of 1935, the WPA, at that point, it's the Works Progress Administration, becomes the major source of funding. 1941 is the purported end of the survey in some states. In June of 1943, the Works Progress Administration closes and ends survey funding and it's reestablished by 1957. So how was the Historic American Building Survey run? It was managed centrally in DC by the branch of plans and designs. It was thus then divided into 39 districts that varied in size. Some districts contain multiple states, some contain only a part of a state. Because there were so many districts involved, the project could be managed locally, and you'll note some variation from state to state. There were, however, general guidelines. What becomes the Historic American Building Survey was intended to document pre-1860 buildings and was not limited to residential construction. Buildings considered endangered were given higher priority in completion. Remodeled buildings were likely removed from any list of review. So in short, the program was designed to document pre-1860 buildings. It was not limited to residential construction. I have seen bridge diagrams, but it definitely includes homes. You will see variation from state to state and within states depending on the goals of the specific program manager in that district. So what did the survey produce? There were three products of the survey, and this is what varies from the versions of the architectural studies carried out by the Federal Art Project and the Federal Writers Project. The primary goal of the Historic American Building Survey was to produce architectural drawings. There were strict guidelines set out for the architectural drawings. Most of the time, those guidelines were kept. Basically, the idea was to use the survey as a chance to create a reference work of historic American architecture. The variation in the survey came from finding people that were qualified to do this work. So as the job market starts to pick up again around 1940, some districts weren't able to find qualified draftspeople. The Historic American Building Survey also includes photographs. It was added a little bit later to the survey as a action item. There were strict guidelines for photographs and what they were supposed to contain and who was supposed to take them. However, in some districts, the district officers ended up taking the photos themselves to save money. So photography can be hit or miss. And then there's the historical context. This was a really late addition to the program. They actually thought they'd be able to do the history quite easily for free from local libraries. Every genealogist in the room can tell us how that went. It didn't go well. So history is kind of the weakest portion of the Historic American Building Survey but we'll see what it turns out as in a moment. The Library of Congress is the official repository for the Historic American Building Survey. The final product of any surveys were placed on file there and can be accessed on their website. This is in your handout, so you do not need to save the link at loc.gov slash pictures slash collection slash hh slash bibliography dot html. And let's take a look at what a survey looks like. I'm from Middletown, Connecticut, so I looked for a property in my area. This is the Richard Alsop House. I believe this is now the Wesleyan University Art Gallery. This is a photo that was taken during the WPA era. What's the immediate advantage to me as a genealogist? 
I can now see what this home looked like in about 1937. And I can also look at exact diagrams of the property's construction at the time. You can note changes, you can get a feel for the property, which of course is especially helpful if the property is no longer standing, which happens a lot in areas that were subject to urban renewal. In the 1950s and 1960s, many, many, many communities tore down historic homes. If you are looking for an ancestor's home, it is no longer standing. This is a great way to fill in the gap. And here is a reference to its history. As you can see, this is probably the weakest part of the historical survey. This references two reference books, and basically all we get is that the home was built in 1838 by Richard, Richard Alsop. That being said, it's a starting point. It's something we can use to follow further. So why is this collection helpful? For genealogists, there's two reasons this collection might be helpful. It's a snapshot of what the property looked like almost 90 years ago. As I said, urban renewal in the 1950s and 60s lost a lot of American historic properties. If you're looking to document an ancestor's home that's no longer standing, it's a great option. It's a weak spot, but it can also give us hints as to the history of the property. It's a place to start looking, whether we're trying to learn more about an ancestor's home or document our own property. So this was one of the common questions I ran into as I was doing research, is what's at the Library of Congress the entire collection? I'd ask a local archives and they tell me it's at the Library of Congress. That's actually not the case. So the collection at the Library of Congress is the final product of the Historic American Building Survey. It's only the final product. Working papers, photos, research notes, and the records of individuals who worked for the Historic American Building Survey can be found at the state level. These records are held by a variety of different institutions. There is a starting link in your handout. Some were privately donated and can be found in state historical societies or local historical societies as a result. Some offices ended up with their office notes being transferred to the state library or to the state archives. There are photography collections, raw research files, architectural diagrams and sketches, and more that never made it to the Library of Congress. That being said, some state level collections are identical to the Library of Congress collection. The short answer is that some states decided they wanted to go back and create reference files on site. And to do that, they went to the Library of Congress. This image, which is of the San Diego mission in Georgia, appears on the Georgia Tech website and that of the Library of Congress. The source in this case is from the Library of Congress. It's available for reuse there. Basically, the idea was accessibility. Now, not every collection is an exact copy of the Library of Congress. California indicates that their collection largely contains duplicate files. But they also say that these materials are supplemented by administrative files, correspondence, survey notes, sketches, field notes, essays, ephemera, newspaper clippings, and other published materials. If you're looking for house history, you really want to be checking both locales. So in short, whether you're digging into the history of an ancestor's home or your own, the WPA years of the Historic American Building Survey can prove to be a valuable resource. And of course, don't forget to check out the Federal Writers Project and the Federal Artists, excuse me, the Federal Art Project to fill in some gaps. You may get more history from the Federal Writers Project and some wonderful images from the Federal Art Project. Thank you.